we're not waiting around for a man to sweep us off our feet even if he does we like it thank you but i still can afford my own you know what i'm saying like i like your dinner and your wine and all your nice sweet stuff but i like the fact that i can also take myself on a solo date oh that's what i'm talking about okay <laughs> What's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Akusia Benhene. If you're new, if you're a returning subscriber, hey boo, what it do? What it do? So in today's video, you're welcome to a new episode of what I would call my thoughts on. So in this series, we're gonna be doing my makeup. It's going to be a get ready with me series where I do my makeup and then also share my thoughts on pretty much everything that is going on. Pretty much pop culture, everything, social media, everything that is going on. As long as I have some thoughts on that, we're gonna be talking about it. This is my form of pairing makeup and media because these two things, they have my heart. If you didn't know, I do have a radio broadcasting background, so I intend to sort of like put that in here somehow and I felt like this was going to be a great way to do it also I always have thoughts on something always always have opinions to share about something that's going on on social media and sometimes I feel like my opinions are something that people should hear okay sometimes I feel like my opinions are worth sharing with the world so in this series I'm gonna be doing that a lot of makeup a lot of talking a lot of being very opinionated and I love that for me but I also want you guys to join me because I want it to be conversational I want you guys to be able to write in the comment you know when I bring something up let's talk about it and this is just to be chit chatty okay this is just to share our ideas and thoughts on general things that are going on around the world be a little lady Penelope dear gentle reader give you a little gossip here and there you know we all like a little tea here and there so this series is going to be all about that so I hope that you guys enjoy this first episode it's very random a lot of things all over the place but please do enjoy that I'm not gonna hold you so much for the intro I hope you enjoyed and I definitely look forward to seeing you in my next my thoughts on episode so love you without further ado let's get right into it I'm gonna start off with my primer. This is my primer from Tees Cosmetics. I'm gonna use that to just prime my face. While I start talking about my thoughts, <laughs> my thoughts on working in corporate as a black person, okay? As an immigrant who is black with a little bit of an accent, with a little bit of an accent or with an accent, not even a little bit, I have an accent everybody knows that i wasn't born in this country obviously i'm gonna have an accent so i've been working in tech sales um at this point for just a few months i'm gonna say maybe just three months i'm very new to the tech industry and i absolutely love working in tech i love technology i love you know the idea of what technology could do to our lives so i love that area but that's not why i'm here why i'm here is why is it that I feel like Americans are very biased? And this thing I try to, I say it every time to any American that I tend to have a conversation with. <laughs> Americans tend to be very biased towards anybody that speaks their language or that is from this country. And with that being said, you can still live in this country, be living in an America or be sort of like an American, which is like immigrant. But if you have an accent, they still treat you different they still do and take this from me the type, type of job that I do I have to speak to a lot of like C-level employees what am I saying I have to speak to a lot of like C-levels and CEOs people like that and immediately when they hear that you have an accent there's this level of mistrust which is I don't blame them also because you know maybe things in the past have happened that have shown Americans that people who are not from America are not true or not to be believed i don't know but there's just something Amer an american would rather choose someone who's one american two lives in america three has services that is in america and four has the american accent 
top, top, top. I always say it every time. It's very easy for you to be born here, have the full on American accent. For, I mean like, oh, I'm not getting my words right. So if you are born here, have the American accent and everything, plus someone who is born here, but doesn't have the American accent, maybe has like my type of accent or an Indian accent or anything like that. It's very easy for this person to like go up than this person. It's very easy for this person to sell products to the regular American person than this person with an accent, which is, it doesn't make sense to me. If you're in the sales industry, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's almost impossible for people to talk to you because they're like, mm, I don't know if we can trust this accent. They don't blatantly say that to you, but you can just tell. So my thoughts on that is, I feel like Americans are very biased to anyone that's American, to anyone that has a full on American accent, anyone with that they feel like they can trust. And I feel like that's not that's not cool because like if you're selling me a good product, I don't care what your accent is. Yes, I understand why people will feel like that, but like it's not always the case. It is never always the case. Very random thoughts, you guys. Very random thoughts on certain things. I'm gonna go in with my concealer. I'm using this concealer from Hyde. Um, this is their multi-use concealer in the shade Espresso. Okay, so my thoughts on colorism and how I feel like the new generation white treats the new generation black. Is it just me? Or this new generation white kids have a very good approach to building a relationship with black people. I don't know if I said that right, but if you know what I'm saying, if you're on TikTok, then you probably know. And this is not even just TikTok, right? This is personal interactions that I have had with white people. Mind you, I live in Massachusetts. It could be that white people in Massachusetts or the white young millennials in Massachusetts are very nice. It could be, not all of them, but I say this to say that from what I have noticed, I personally feel like the new generation, when I say new generation, I mean millennial generation because it's our time. It's currently our time. So everything right now, it's about us, okay? The, yeah, the Gen Z's are there. I know that. But hear me out. Like, I feel like it's definitely our time, our time. Millennials, Gen Z's are like, they're going to have their time immediately after us. They're right there. Like, we're all together. But like, I feel like there's a, a wave that's just like a millennial type wave, if you, if it makes sense. Or maybe it's just because I'm millennial, so I'm a little biased. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I am saying that because... I feel like every interaction that I've had, not every, maybe I can say like 90% of the interactions that I've had with other millennials are nice. You can see that they're making conscious effort to go out of their way to be nice to you, which sometimes feels a little off because I'm like, you don't have to do that. I've had a lot of people who are just like extremely nice to me for no reason. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know? But then also, another part of me is like, what if the millennial white generation, they're just making a conscious effort to right some of the wrongs the older generation did, you know? The older generation obviously didn't put it put it in their way to build a good relationship with black people. And I feel like this new generation millennials, and when I say new, it's only because, you know, like the old generation is there, the new, it's like, it's just the word. But I feel like they are making a conscious effort for sure to build good, healthy relationship with, you know, millennial black people. And I like that. I do. I actually do. But if you don't come correct, let me just say that. If you don't come correct, obviously, you're going to be checked because, like, I don't have time for that. But if you're nice, I appreciate that. Okay, I generally appreciate people being kind and nice. Um, so, but also it's just uh, something that I something that I noticed. So I figured we'll just like put it out there. Is it just me, or you guys also feel like this new generation white kids are generally much more warmer and nicer and kinder with their words towards black people? I mean, who cares if they're not? But like, it's just nice to live in harmony in this world. Like. It's just it, it just makes sense that we live in peace we live together we live with respect for each other you know it just makes sense that we do that and i feel like this new generation kids are doing it they are making a conscious effort to build relationship with everybody and not just black people just generally they're making a conscious and tiktok tiktok 
when I say TikTok plays such a big role in some of the things that I'm saying and some of the ways that people in general are thinking right now, TikTok. I'm going in with another concealer just to also sort of like build more coverage or highlights. So the first one was, you know, and just the base. This is to top it up, okay? This is the actual concealer. So, because I see people who I feel like if it wasn't for TikTok, they wouldn't know a lot of things about a lot of other people, a lot of other countries. So TikTok for sure has played so much role in, you know, making all of us see things that we wouldn't see or think of on a regular basis. And I think that that has also shifted a lot of people's mentality when it comes to the world in general. People are just people it doesn't hurt to love on people like it doesn't hurt it doesn't take away anything from you so this is such a random get ready with me so i apologize in advance if it's not the regular one that you're used to <laughs> it is heavily my thoughts on things that are going on and just you know wanting to share them with you and think i mean like get to know what you guys think too because this is like a little sisters connect type of situation okay <laughs> okay next i'm gonna go in with my blush Next, I'm gonna go in with my foundation. This is Fenty's stick. This is their Ease Drop stick. I've tried this on here with you guys before and I actually really liked it. So I figured I would go ahead and use it again today. It is definitely on the red side, but I think I can make it work. I feel like right now also women just taking charge of a lot of things are in the forefront. And I'm not saying that it has never been like that or this is the only time that it's been like that but i'm saying that now it's more like prevalence like right now a lot of people see women not just as women and people who can stay in the house and take care of kids and do chores and stuff like that now people see women as a whole something else and i can't find the right words for it i feel like women have branded ourselves so well over the past few years if that's the word okay because we have women who have taken places and positions that have showed the world that women can do it if you let us and especially coming from an african woman who you know society has always taught you to like stay in the house do this and cater to the man and da 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 da, da. i just want to say that i'm very happy with the type of mentality that i had when i met my husband and i'm very happy and grateful with the type of man that my husband is because he never would make you feel like well as a woman you're doing too much and as a man i'm supposed to be doing all of it no 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 no, no. not around here <laughs> not with this woman not with how ambitious I am, you know what I'm saying? So I am very grateful for the type of or the breed of men that are coming up that are just understanding that it's our world. There's a place for you. There's a place for me. If you allow both of us, we can thrive together. Okay. And I really, really like that. And, you know, shout out to the men that are looking at, you know, things with a whole different picture and a whole different light because... It's nice to always have a partner. It's always nice to have a woman who's a go-getter. A woman who you know that if put in a situation, they can definitely figure it out and get you out of that situation. You know, you know a woman that you know that you can rely on, same as they can rely on you. So I'm very happy with, you know, the dynamics right now and just how generally I feel like women are winning. I like that. I really really do like that and how I feel like they have their men supporting them it's always so beautiful like you see Jackie Aina and Dennis like you see a lot of these women with their men just giving them the chair that they need it's like chair siding them which is so nice and it's like no competition it's like nobody feels like the woman is doing so well than the man like no at the end of the day we're a partner we're together so all the men that are doing that, all the men that are allowing their women to just shine and be the stars that they're meant to be, shout outs to you, okay? Sometimes that's all a woman needs. Sometimes all a woman needs is someone to, you know, give her that piggyback and say, yeah, I believe you, <laughs> you know? Yeah, go for it. Sometimes that's all a woman is looking for in a partner as a man. So shout outs to you if you're already doing that. And if you're not, just know. 
that we're here to be partners. <laughs> it's not a competition. It really is not a competition. And another thing is our generation of women were not idle. Motherhood, one that's one thing I was saying the other day. Our generation of women were not okay with just motherhood, wifeyhood, just that housewifehood. See. Let me tell you guys, I preach it every time. A woman should be taken care of. A woman has no business doing a nine to five, da 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 da. Like, I feel like, no, we need to be arrested. We need to be queens, princesses. But also, a woman should always have a goal. I strongly believe that a woman, just as a man, should be an overachiever. Like, why are you not fighting for the next big bag? You don't have to do a nine to five job to be able to do that. But if a nine to five job is what you currently have, if that's what is bringing you the income that you're looking for, baby girl, keep pushing in that direction. <laughs> like, keep pushing in that direction. So, like, I am all for women who they know their purpose, even though they're still doing the motherhood, the wifeyhood, all the other hoods, they still know that this alone doesn't satisfy me. Because I say it every time. Motherhood and parenting and all of that, it's, it satisfies just one part of me. One part of me feels fulfilled. One part of me feels like I have achieved in that area. But a huge part of me needs different type of success which is not my family, <laughs> you know? And I'm sure that a lot of women out there, that's why you see a lot of women CEOs, business owners, who are still moms and wives. That's what I'm talking about. Do it all, girl. I'm here for it. We're not waiting around for a man to sweep us off our feet. Even if he does, we like it, thank you. But I still can afford my own. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like your dinner and your wine and all your nice sweet stuff. But I like the fact that I can also take myself on a solo date. Oh, that's what I'm talking about, okay? That's what I'm talking about. So I feel like that's one thing that my mom definitely embedded in us right from childhood. She would let us know that independence is key. You don't wait around for someone to come and do something for you when you can very much do that thing for yourself. If you're not able to do it, that's fine, you can always outsource. But if you can do it for yourself, please, please be dependent on yourself, okay? Now my thoughts on marriage and is marriage for everybody? My answer is no. <laughs> my answer is 100% no. Uh, marriage is not, from ev it's not for everybody, not from everybody. <laughs> marriage is definitely not for everybody. I haven't been married for the longest time in the world. I have a six-year-old child, so you should know I have been married for a while, <laughs> okay? I've been here for a while. But one thing I can say for a fact is it takes two to make marriage work. It doesn't take one. That's one thing I have come to learn. It takes wanting to keep the work going on both sides. You need to understand that. Your husband needs to understand that. It takes having a partner that is willing to put in the work as much as you are. And that's just that's just what it is because ask yourself even your siblings you're constantly fighting with your siblings but you always find a way to maybe come back together that's kind of like marriage marriage for me my husband is like my brother like legit though like my husband is legit like my brother um, but aside that that's kind of like how we look at our relationship we don't really and I'm happy to say that because my husband and I were not big on what society thinks marriage should be we are explaining or we are paving a way for ourselves we are making relationship and marriage what we want it to be and it's working perfectly fine for us that's and that's why i say that you need to have a partner who is going to be on the same page with you what should your dynamic of marriage be if you're married if you're interested in being married Eventually, when you do get married, you will find a dynamic with your partner. But if you're, you're in a relationship right now, obviously you should ask yourself, is this someone who constantly tries, tries to like bicker or like clash heads with me or not understand me? If you guys never come to any form of agreement when you're in a relationship, best believe marriage will stress you the fuck out because y'all have to come to an agreement under one roof every fucking day every fucking day okay 
So marriage definitely is a two-way street. You need to hold your end of the basket. I'm going to hold my end of the basket. And then we can both carry the load with the same strength and keep it kicking. But once you are lopsiding or you are not putting in the energy that I am putting in, my side of the basket is lopsided. All of the fucking load is now on me. So when it starts happening like that and it stays like that for a really long time, that's when people start to get bitter. But communication is always key. I say that, finding the right time to communicate. But again, the tall and short is marriage is not for everybody. Why do I say it's not for everybody? Some people are just not ready to work on themselves. Some people are just not ready to compromise. Some people are just not ready to constantly be in agreement with somebody else. Some I used to have that mentality of like, why do I have to make a decision with you for my life? Like, it's my life. Why do you want to help me make a decision? But when I got married, a lot of things changed for me. And that's also why I say that if you don't find a partner that makes it make sense for you, it's very difficult to do it because they are not pushing you in the right direction. Hell, yes, 100%, I would say that I don't believe that marriage is for everybody. But can you make it work? I mean, again, a lot of the old women like to say that if you haven't been in marriage for long, you're not the best person to give advice. So I'm just going to give my teeny weeny advice on the number of years that I've been married, okay? That's my teeny weeny advice. That's something, it's definitely tough. It's not an easy process. Again, this is, understand that even your siblings, you're constantly fighting, trying to like punch one of your siblings in the face. That's literally what it's going to look like in a marriage. It's it's the truth i'm not even gonna hide it that's what it's gonna look like but are you both willing to respectfully find that common grounds that doesn't make you fight every day <laughs> you know that makes you both stay sane as two adults and leave with peace of mind that's the question but especially with marriage if you don't find that person that makes it easy for you to be able to resolve things or to be able to come together and talk about things that's where it's tough because you know that you're putting in the work and this other person is not putting in the work so what i can say is find you a person that's on the same wavelength as you a person that you know that i can make decisions with this person this person doesn't see me as less of a human like there are certain qualities that I feel like if a person has, it will be difficult for them to mess you up in the long run, if it makes sense. So that's what I'm saying. If this person doesn't have the qualities, communication, you know, like all these little things, then don't even start in the first place. Like have fun and keep it kicking because if you end up putting this person in a marriage, I don't know. But also I can't write everybody's character off because I wasn't entirely the most perfect person in the world before I got married but with marriage and with time also teaches you a lot of things you get to learn how you want it to go if you really want it to work that's the key if you really want it to work if you really really want to see progress in your marriage if you really really want to do life with this person you're gonna put in the work so if you see someone who is not ready to put in the work or if you have a partner that's not willing to put in the work as much as you maybe start having some conversations because it's needed okay we need to see are we on the same vision like is the tunnel vision the same are we seeing the same things like why am i doing this and you are not like it's just a conversation and always find the best timing to do that conversation because also communication and timing they go hand in hand okay so yeah <laughs> Okay, so I've decided that I'm gonna do like a full on brown eyeshadow, just a monochrome brown, very boring, but I don't know, it's what I'm feeling right now. So I'm gonna go in with this brown shade that I have right here that should definitely get the work going. Now, my thoughts on living in a different country as a Ghanaian. I've been wanting to talk about this for a minute, okay? I'm gonna start like work. I'm gonna talk about them in like work, family, friends, all of that, like in these little categories. So my thoughts on living in a different country as a Ghanaian when it comes to work. If you work in corporates, amazing. <laughs> amazing i love it i used to work in corporates in ghana before i moved here to the u.s so that trend I, i'm not gonna lie i thought transitioning from corporates ghana to corporate america would have been a bit tough for me because obviously i didn't go to school here 
I've only picked a few online courses in this country so my CV doesn't exactly look Americanized it looks Ghana nice <laughs> if it makes sense like I have a lot of work experience from uh, my home country but with that being said I feel like it's all about you as a person yes job experience definitely has played a big role in you know allowing me to work in different places and be able to like do different things that I would have never thought that I could do in this country also because I have an accent I always say that I feel like my accent I always say because I have an African accent I feel like it's I have always been of the mentality that I probably could not go far but it was a lie okay that was a total lie my accent doesn't play any role in anything I mean yes it does sometimes in sales when you're trying to like reel people in and try to like convince people and build that trust because generally Americans don't trust anybody that has an accent so it's not just me but also I have I would say that I love corporate America not like love corporate America I love working in corporate in America let me just say that <laughs> and it's easy to get a job here if you know what you're looking for not entirely easy sometimes it can take three months to get a job like it did for me to get my last two jobs it took like a whole four or five months so it can take a while because that's what I'm saying if you work in corporate then that's different but if you are looking for every other type of job I think that that could be fairly easy because the economy is done in a way that there is always labor needed to make the economy thrive if it makes sense so Americans constantly are hiring someone <laughs> Americans industries they're constantly fishing for people who will bring um, better labor into the company so that also sort of plays in corporate there are uh, always I mean there's always room to grow I mean one thing about corporates is people barely leave because if someone finds a really good job with a good pay with the flexibility and everything that you're looking for sometimes it's almost impossible to leave that position so they might or maybe not leave that position or leave the company sometimes people just don't want to leave that company so sometimes people will just stay in the same company but move up in the company so that's kind of like how corporate america goes you know it's easier to grow in one company than to just keep moving around in different companies but it's always easy to get a job if you know what you're looking for if you have the qualification set you're gonna get a job okay so one thing I can say is I absolutely love the dynamic here when it comes to working in corporate America because there is so much room to grow if you're on the right path if you're talking to the right people if you are confident enough to be able to Put yourself in rooms where people originally wouldn't go to if you're confident enough to ask certain questions if you're confident enough to like you know enter certain places so that's i think that's definitely one thing i like about myself i'm not gonna sit back and i really am reserved when it comes to work when i go to work i'm really reserved but i have a million and one questions and best believe all those ones are gonna be answered like I don't mind who I had to talk to I don't mind which level I have to go to to get that answer I am gonna get it and it's always usually to help me and the business so work love 10 out of 10 for me family that's where I have a lot of things to say family in America is very different Americans I would say are not the most family oriented people for me and that's just it I can't even hide it. I've said it, okay? I said it. Americans are used to families living apart from each other. One family can be living in Massachusetts and another family could be living in Texas. You know, that is the norm in this country. Everybody is used to it. Someone's mom could be living in Florida and then they live here. That is the norm, okay? That's what everybody is used to in this country. That is pretty different from where I, I mean, that's pretty different from what I am used to in the country that I'm coming from, obviously, because Ghana is very family oriented. Like we are eating together every Sunday. It's like we're doing Sunday for food. The family has a family house. You know, Americans also occasionally would do that. You guys see it in movies. Sometimes they have a big family house where everybody lives in, but that's super rare. Every American child, almost like 90% of the American child or kids in this country want to move out by 18 which is quite it's it is beautiful but it also breaks that 
family union so fast like 18 years it breaks it too early like way too early the one thing i've realized is that the african people here or like the black people majority of them are still very family oriented which i like so that's maybe tells me that it's just a black people thing black people like family black people are more connected to their family black pe people would rather live in a family setting than live away from the family setting but white people are not like that real american people they're not like that <laughs> which is very concerning to me like that was definitely um, a bit of a culture shock because it's like nobody cares like everybody is living their life peacefully not living with their extended family or not seeing their extended family for years like people are very okay with that i'm not okay with that i'm definitely not okay with that i miss my family like i really miss my family sometimes and you know even though i'm an adult with my new family i have my kids my husband and everything i still sometimes want to be by my dad and just like call him and like or maybe go to his house and chit chat and stuff like that and i know people here very rarely do that <laughs> that was a bit of a shock to me because i'm like ah, ah, i'm very family oriented like i don't mind staying away from my family for a little but I like knowing that I still have family that I can always go to and not like have to travel miles away to go and see my family. But people in this country, I'm questioning it a little, okay? I'm questioning that a little. Okay, so the eye area is pretty much done. My voice is husky. It's like that sometimes, okay? I'm going to go ahead and use this powder from Charlotte Tilbury right here to sort of like brighten my under eye. And that also gives you a very smooth under eye. And then I am also trying this blush that I got from NYX. This is meant to be their buttermilk blush. It's apparently their new blush formula. So let's go ahead and try it out. It is kind of orangey in shade you guys know that i live for orange blushes however i live for cool toned orange blushes not bright ones like this i don't know if this is gonna work for me go ahead and try it out okay that is not entirely bad i am not mad at that that is definitely very soft orange even though it's not the bright orange that i would have gone for this is also something I can wear on a very soft day. On a day that I'm like feeling soft girl-ish. When I'm in my soft girl days, I have my soft girl days and my hard girl days, okay? <laughs> so it's definitely a lot more on the powdery side. It has pigments for sure, so you have to be careful before you look like a freaking clown. Um, but I don't mind, you know, I don't mind that. It does have like a little bit of gold deposit under it. I don't know if you guys can see. It's like you can see a little bit of like glow to it. Did you guys put a little glow in there? NYX? Did you did you add a little glow? Like maybe a little gold particle somewhere? The shade is Vivid Orange. So if you're wondering, they have them in a million and one other shades. I just figured this would be a good one for me okay i'm just gonna top it up with my favorite blush of all time right now this is the house labs blush this is in the shade watermelon bliss i love this one so much and then now oh my blush is definitely blushing oh she's blushing <laughs> now last but not the least my thoughts on friendships in a different country besides my country ghana <laughs> my thoughts on friendship is definitely let me just line my lips because i can't say that <laughs> i can't say anything with my lip in the process so once again for my lip i'm using this and uh this is not nyx this is huda beauty their lip contour 2.0 and then now i'm gonna top it up with my lip gloss okay we didn't think we we're gonna have a full face at the end of this makeup but we do can you imagine <laughs> okay so i'm gonna go ahead and top it up with my all-time favorite gloss this is the maybelline lifter gloss in the shade topaz 100 my favorite of all time i'm just gonna use that to top it up okay so my thoughts on friendships before i go ahead and like you know add some accessories and everything 
Is friendships in this country different? Yes, I would say that. Is it easier to make friends back home than it is to make friends here? Maybe not. It's the same thing, you know. It's the same process. It's the same thing that you have to do. Go out of your way to speak to people. Go out of your way to be nice to people. Um, sometimes it does feel like that because sometimes I'm not exactly in that business. I am very reserved when it comes to looking for friends or like putting myself out there in that regard. If I have to do it with work, if I have to do it with something that proves myself, I can do it. But if I have to do it to build a relationship, I usually don't because I'm like, I don't know if I can maintain this relationship. I am definitely the type of person, I'm definitely the type of person that finds it hard to maintain any other relationship besides my marriage <laughs> and my actual relationship that I have with my husband. I'm not gonna lie. Cause I feel like every type of relationship takes work. And so, you know, personally for me, friendships friendships can be a little hard out here. But another thing that I really like about friendships in this country is that it's more like a sisterhood. And it's so beautiful. Like, it's so cool. The way the girls here do their friendships, it's like a sisterhood. You know, you have each other's back. They grow together. They literally can be friends till they're like 80. That's so cute. I feel like that's not the same thing back home. Oh, please don't come for me. If you have friends that you've had, I mean, I have friends that I've had for 15 years, you know, like definitely. But I'm praying that these friendships will obviously last till we grow old. But like, be honest with yourselves. How, like, compare this America to Ghana, a lot of the friendships here last way longer than they do back home. I'm just saying. I am just, it's just my thoughts. My thoughts on. That's why it's called my thoughts on, okay? It's not your thoughts, it's my thoughts. I personally feel like, um, I personally feel like friendships here last way longer. I feel like people here are real. <laughs> people here are very real for sure because if they don't like something, they're gonna tell you right to your face. If they don't like a certain thing, they're gonna let you know. If they can't do it again, they will let you know. And that's one thing that I've always wanted with every form of relationship that I've ever been in. Friendship, marriage, whatever. If you don't like something, say it. <laughs> if you don't appreciate something, say it. Sometimes someone might not exactly know what they're doing. If you bring their attention to it, it does help. And I feel like people here do that way, way easier than people back home. Someone, I mean, I feel like people back home, just this is just personal experience also. People back home, I feel like, will rather just hold on to the situation and judge you in their minds or just assume that you're a bad person because you did something and they didn't ask you. They're like, yeah, that's that's what she does. That's who she is as a person. Da, 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 da. But people here are going to talk it out with you. I mean, maybe there are people here who also can't be bothered talking about it but I know for a fact that a lot of people here have that approach as compared to a lot of people back home <laughs> okay some people back home I know that people would just up and leave the friendship because they're like she did that she did that and you didn't even talk about it with me sis <laughs> so that's my thoughts on friendships <laughs> very very random so the look is kind of sort of done I'm gonna spray my face right now so that is the finished look, you guys. So I told you guys that I didn't know what look I wanted to create, but at the end of the day, we're still going to have something nice because I knew it. And this is what we did, okay? This is definitely a full face type of summer look. I love the glow. I love the cheeks. It's definitely giving more color. You know, even though the eyes are dull, it definitely has a lot more color to it. But yeah, I really just wanted to hop on here to do a get ready with me. I figured this will be such a great series and a great way to get ready because I was looking for a way to like get ready but not be boring because I'm not a type of person that likes talking a lot. I always say that like I like talking but I don't like talking if it makes sense. Like I like talking when I have to. <laughs> so I thought that this would be a great way to get my thoughts out because I constantly have a number of things that I'm thinking about, obviously, and then I love to do my makeup. So what other way to do my thoughts and do my makeup? 
at the same time you know so comment below and let me know if you have any thoughts on my thoughts that i shared with you guys in this video anything at all that you want to do it let's you know you want to say let's put it on a conversation let's have a conversation let's talk about it because and anything else that you may have thoughts on that you feel like i should talk about leave it in the comments as well we could definitely talk about it but this is a finished look i hope you guys enjoyed this style of video very new very random very out of the blue very talk talkative like style i don't know but i hope that you guys like it i hope you give it a thumbs up i hope you subscribe and become a part of the beautiful family that we have on here and also follow me on instagram if you're looking for much more fast paced makeup tutorials because it's gonna be on there okay yeah thank you guys so much for watching today's video i appreciate and love you guys so much for always coming back and i hope that i see you in my next video okay bye i can't even get my words out i love you guys i will see you in the next one okay when they say she get it from her mama Mama say you fuck her right Your body really slump her like Tell me in the hall But come tell me is you found Cause I'm tryna go good tonight Holdin' hope she slept her right